Okay, good morning students. Um, I think we'll be able to get into the second tutorial quite quickly today. Um, if we look at our interface, I've gone through the Revit interface, uh, explaining a few uh, vital parts of the interface. So our second uh, part of uh, this uh, tutorial is uh, to set up our file for drawing. Uh, I've done most of, most of the setting up. It's just some uh, tweaks that you'll have to do while you're drawing. And yeah, so we'll, we'll get on with that. So the first thing I want uh, the class to do is click on the architecture tab. And once we have the architecture tab, I want you to click on model line. Okay, so in this, uh, this uh, uh, tutorial, we're going to draw up a simple uh, layout plan, uh, which we will then advance into 3D. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so if, if we click on the architecture tab, uh, we have something called a model line. Now a model line is a 3D line. So for example, if I click on this model line, and I choose my lines from the drop down menu, probably a 0.7. Um, if I draw a little line there, you'll find that in 3D it represents this line. It shows it to you in three dimensions. Okay, so that's the important part about a model line. We have to understand that, and that falls under the architecture tab. Now, there's two types of lines in Revit. There's a model line, and then there's a drafting line, which is under the annotate tab. So if we click on detail line and we draw a line, say. 0.7 the both lines in in the 2d view look exactly the same however in 3d only the model line shows so we have to be very careful of that so the drafting line it's only for your 2d views and the model line it also shows up in 3d okay so we can quickly delete those two lines and get back into the tutorial um, Okay, so class, uh, what we want to do is draw five sides of um, 15 meter by 30 meter uh, and array them across and um, use the necessary annotations to, um, to annotate the site. Okay, so what I want you to do is you'll find here that your... Uh, that your... Uh, view tabs uh, are very close together so what I want you to do is select from your right holding down on your left uh, click select the first uh, view view tab and move it out and you just drag it so you're gonna select and then hover your mouse over until the move arrow comes up and we're just gonna move it out so you're going to do that again, move, click and hold, move it out, and click and hold and move it out. Okay, so it's a very simple way of uh, clicking and moving uh, objects in Revit. Okay, so our second step would be to draw the model lines. We're using model lines because we want to perceive it in 3D. Um, and then for your learning purposes you understand to work from basic line model 3ds into actual object 3d so if we click on model line and we choose from our drop down menu i've already set up some line line types and line weights for you so you don't have to go into the necessary details of setting it up uh, but in further lessons i'll teach you how to set up your own layers so we want to use the 0 0.7 layer if we click on it and we're going to click and pull down so just like autocad we click we pull down we enter our side dimension of 30 meters which is 30,000 millimeters Revit is set to millimeters always remember that so 30 meters will be 30,000 millimeters so once we enter the dimension we click OK escape and escape again so remember in Revit whenever you choose a um, a command you'll have to escape twice 
because it's still in the command so for example if we click on line again we in the command we pull out uh, 15 meters uh, we pull to the top 30 meters until it snaps you'll find that that little dotted blue line will come up and a little X and we pull towards the side now we're still in the command you can see that your your uh, cursor is, uh, has a crosshair on it it means it's still in the command if you press escape it's, it's still in the command you have to press escape twice okay so that's how we draw our border so I'll start again let's delete this we click on model line click anywhere on our screen and pull down 30,000 enter we move to our side enter 15,000 enter go up you can either enter uh, 30,000 as a dimension or you can pull up until it snaps to that point I prefer using the snap because it's easier so we click and then we come back and we join the line so that's our 15 by 30 meter site which is just drawn up as a box if you want to move this you can select the entire thing just like how you moved your um, your view tabs uh, you can as you hover your mouse over you'll find that this uh, move icon comes up click and hold it and you'll be able to move your site okay so we want to move it quite close to the side okay so once we have this first site drawn up the next major thing we'll have to learn is how to copy a site or copy objects so just just to quickly show you if you click on your 3d icon you'll find that your site has now appeared in three dimensions okay so as a line model and then we click back onto our top of ground floor and we will learn how to copy this uh, site over okay so again start off from your top uh, top right coming down into your top left and selecting only these three lines not any other three lines just these three lines so we select it and then this panel will come up okay now in this panel we have our modified tools like our move our line offset and copy so we want to use the copy command if you hover your mouse over the copy command it'll show you a little video of how to uh, copy objects over okay so it's very very simple so if we click our copy command and with our one two three lines already being selected click on this corner here on your left hand corner click on it and then pull it to your right hand corner you'll see that we have created another site now one more command in the copy command is if you click copy we click on multiple so we wanted five different stands so we've got two if we click on it will be three four five and escape and escape one more time to escape all commands so you'll find that you have now five sites okay one more time just uh, to refresh we'll select these lines we'll click the copy command we'll make sure our multiple is selected if you want multiple copies if you are only copying once it's fine you don't have to click the multiple so we start here on our left hand corner dragging to the right then we just drag across because it's already in the command okay and five times and escape escape okay so you have your five sites okay the next uh, command that that we're going to look at is um, our offset command and it's a very simple it works very much like the AutoCAD offset but a bit uh, um, of a different method so I want you to just move your view uh, tabs out a bit more so that it doesn't interfere in your site plan. Um, okay, so we want to create a 10 meter road with a 3 meter verge on either side. So we will use the modify tab and then the offset tab. If you hover your mouse over the offset, it will 
quickly show you a little video of how you offset with some instructions. So if you're ever confused, just hover your mouse over um, an icon and it'll teach you how to uh, use that icon or that command. So we're going to click on offset. Now the important part with offset is that Revit will give you a little tab asking you for um, the offset distance, uh, either it's numerical or graphical. We'll always use numerical, uh, but later on in the course I'll show you how to use the graphical. But for now we'll use numerical and we can use an offset of 3 meters, which is 3000 millimeters. And we bring our mouse and we click or we hover our mouse over a line and we see that Revit is showing us a dotted line on which side it's going to offset. So we click on that line and it's offsetted a line for us. The same thing on the other side, we click and it's offsetted a line for us. Okay, so that's our verge. And then if we click on offset again, we want a um, road of 10 meters. We enter 10,000 for 10 meters and we offset on from the three meter line and offset okay and escape escape so you'll find that our lines are not running all the way through i'll teach you how to move them all the way through but before we do that every site has an extension or most sites have an extension so what we will need to do is uh, we need to show the the extent of the sites and uh, to do this we use again our model line but this time I want you to choose from the drop down menu a center line okay so we would come all the way here and we would draw a line of around about 10,000 millimeters so 10 meters and same on the bottom you'll find that it snaps to that point you can click and the same on the other side 10,000 and the same on the bottom you we'll pull it and it uh, snaps okay so that's showing the extent of our uh, other sites the neighboring sites apart from these um, five sites if you look at sg diagrams or site plans that are showing a specific part of a site you'll find that it does show an extension of the neighboring sites. It's very important to uh, locate a site plan within uh, the greater locality. Okay, so we've got our site uh, extensions and now it's time to extend our road and verge um, uh, across so that we form a uniform pattern. Okay, one more thing is in Revit, you'll find that these are your line weights. If you click on them, it's showing you your line weights under your modify tab. So we would like these to still remain at 0 0.7. Okay, so we're going to pull this over and it'll snap. And we're going to click here and pull it over until it snaps. And then we know they are perfectly in line. We're going to click on the top one, pull it over until it snaps, and just click and hold and pull and it snaps. Same on the bottom, click, hold, pull, and click, hold, pull. Same on the bottom, click, hold, pull, click, hold, pull, and you have your road and verge extended. Okay, so those, those are the basics of uh, working with lines. If you click on your 3D tool, you'll find that it has drawn it in 3D which is good so we can actually now visualize it in 3d so we go back to our ground floor uh, which will add in a few more details here and um, yeah and uh, then that should do it for this tutorial on lines so again on our architecture tab click model line we're going to click uh, the drop down menu and change it back to 0 0.7 from center line and you'll find Revit has this little tab here with different line commands. So it's a line, a rectangle, uh, inscribed polygon, uh, circumscribed polygon, a circle. And if you hold your mouse over it, 
it also gives you a little tutorial on how to do uh, how to draw a circle or how to draw any of these uh, lines so if we click on it on circle that's uh, what we want we are going to do the corner beacons so if you go to the uh, edge of uh, your site and you click you'll find that the little uh, square pops up to say it's an endpoint you click on it and you pull out about 600 mil millimeters should be fine you can either just pull out until it reaches 600 or you can type in 600 enter and escape and that's how you draw a circle you can draw each circle individually uh, 600 600 or you could be smart and just copy it over so click on it copy select the center point of that circle and pull down to each center point and you'll find that all your edges of sites have beacons boundary beacons now okay so those are the quick and easy steps of basic line drawing uh, you'll find that in your 3d uh, it represents as a line or um, a circle or dashed line or center line but it's our first step in understanding how a 3d plan works Okay, so class, that's that's it for lecture three on lines, uh, lines and circles and different line types and weights, and um, I'm I'm sure everybody will be able to catch on to this lesson very quickly, and uh, we'll learn more more of the other tools, uh, like your mirror tools and your rotate tools later on in other lectures. But I think for now, uh, the line tools and the quick commands like your move. Your copy and offset are already learnt, so please, please uh, practice this, and uh, uh, we'll we'll learn other commands in further lessons. Okay, thank you, class.